Redistribution with distribution lists. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. Redistribution with distribution lists. Redistribution list. Actually, that's easier than I thought. A distribution list is uh, taking an access control list and applying it to your route updates, typically in a redistribution scenario to keep routes from looping. For example, we've got ham, steak, and eggs going on here. And let's just say we've added a redundant router, let's just say biscuits mm, in the middle. Just in case steak goes down, we have a redundant path between ham and eggs, right? So we redistribute RIP into OSPF and OSPF into RIP and then do the same thing down here. Well. What's to prevent, you know, an OSPF or let's say this guy from coming into RIP and then Ham gets it and sends it back to Steak and Steak sends it to Eggs and now we have a looping route. There's actually nothing to prevent that. So one simple way of, of putting up a wall is we could go in there and say, well, you know what? Let me, let me go red here. I'm going to put a red line here on Biscuits and Steak and use an access list to filter. I'm going to say, you know what? I will not allow 172.17 routes to pass this direction because I know that they came from this way, so that would be a looping route. And I'm not going to allow 10 routes, let's just say 10.1 routes, to go this way. Block, deny. And that's what a distribution list can do. Identify with an access list the routes that you want to allow or deny and then apply it to the routing protocol. Let me show you. I'm going to go into steak, right? Landing on steak. And let's, let's, uh, let's go. This, uh, oh, I put a goal up here. I want to filter three subnets in each direction using distribution lists. So let's, let's take that goal. I'm, let's filter OSPF into RIP first. Uh, I'm going on steak. Let's do a show IP route. I've already got redistribution configured. So this guy's doing it. Uh, steak is actually sending the, the uh, OSPF routes into RIP. Let's just verify. <laughs> Just to make sure. Never trust a router named Steak. That's what I always say. <laughs> so there we go. We can see all of these routes coming through. Ooh. Ooh. Something worth noting. Uh, it is sending the individual. That, that could impact our access list. I, matter of fact, in one of the last demos I did, I adjusted. You know what? Just for consistency. Hang on one second. There we go. I went over to the eggs router, which is this guy over here. And actually tricked OSPF. OSPF's too smart. So it recognizes that I've got a bunch of loopback interfaces to simulate these 172.17 networks. And so it'll advertise them as slash 32s, even though I have the slash 24 subnet mask. It's like, ah, I know what you're doing. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't, OSPF. You will be point to point networks uh, for good. And now you can see over here on this side, all of these are, are showing up as slash 24, which just makes it easier to match with our distribution list. Now let's watch the action happen, shall we? Let's go to the steak router sitting right in the middle. This guy's the one that's passing and doing the redistribution between the two. Let's start our filtering. Uh, first off, you want to use a standard access list to do this. Uh, you can do an extended access list, but it gets a little, a little different. It's, it's not what you would expect. So uh, standard access list, uh, uh, let me show you this, and I'll, I'll explain extended. I'm going to say, again, what's my goal? Filter three subnets in each direction using distribution list. You can say, okay, I mean, you, there's many approaches you could take. You could say, well, I'm going to allow these three guys and then deny everything else because, remember, you're using an access list. So I can use three permit statements, catch these guys, and then let the implicit deny catch everything else. Or you could say, I want to deny these guys explicitly with access uh, list statements, deny statements, and then create a permit statement that permits everything else. It's probably more efficient to do, actually, it is more efficient to, the, to do the former, which is just allow the implicit deny to do its job. Let's do that. I'm going to go into, uh, let's do access list number one. I'll do permit 172.17.1.0.0.0.0.255. And then rinse and repeat. We've got our do, got our three. Good. Here's where the magic happens. Router rip, which again, I'm on stake router, routes being redistributed over into the rip world, world and type in uh, a distribute list, and you type in access list number one, and we will do outbound. Again, as as the uh, updates are going out into the RIP process, they're going to pass through that distribute list. So previously, we were on the ham router, and we saw we had all those routes. Now, based on this and access list number one, we should see all of the 456 disappear. Let's look, shall we? <laughs> Take a look at this. So it looks like we failed, <laughs> right? But we didn't. Look, we've got four, five, and six still there. Check out their hold down timer. Over here, this is how long since the router has received the last updates. You notice this guy's 17 seconds, 46 seconds. Wait a sec. RIP 
Rip should be sending an update once every 30 seconds with all the routes that it knows about. Why do I have different timers here? Well, my friends, we are waiting for these routes to die. <laughs> Frankly, because notice these keep getting reset. It's no longer receiving these. We're just waiting for the hold down timer to expire. You know what? Let's just, let's not, I mean, put it out of its misery. Just clear the routing table. Do a shy IP route. And now those guys, they're gone. New routes sitting in their place. One, two, and three are the only one that's allowed. Woohoo! Success. Let's go the other direction. Let's uh, let's actually do the uh, do the other route. So we're going to filter the ten network going into OSPF or this direction. Um, let's try the other strategy. Uh, we'll deny the specific ones. Let's let's specifically deny one, two, and three, and we'll just do a permit everything for everything else, right? So we'll do access list for on the stake router. Access list. I'll do two. Permit, or actually no, deny. 10.1.1.0.000255. And then let's just repeat that. Do. Repeat that. Three. And then, that's why it's not quite as efficient, we have to do a permit any. Permit everything else. Now we'll go into router OSPF1, and we'll do a distribute list out for, uh, no, no, no. Not out. Uh, distribute list two access list number. Otherwise, it thinks I have an access list named out. Don't want that. Distribute list two outbound. Now let's check out some eggs. Go over to the egg side. Uh, previously, we were seeing all of these routes. We should see one, two, and three disappear. And <laughs> and four. <laughs> what happened? Oh, wait a sec. Ah, I I uh. I uh, I did something. I was playing around uh, in the uh, show. Let me do a show run. Oh, and this actually brings up a good point. Uh, show run uh, router OSPF. Look what I did. Nope. Section. Router o OSPF. Again, when I was playing around, I actually created a distribute list one. Let me show access list one. This is on the eggs router. Um, and notice I just did a deny 10.1.4. I, I was playing around because I wanted to see something. Um, OSPF has a topology table, right? So anytime you do a distribute list in OSPF, it's like faking it out. Because essentially, eggs knows about everything. It has the topology table. Remember how o OSPF uh, rolls? Essentially, all of its neighbor routers exchange the full routes. They, everybody has to be in sync. That's a requirement. They all have exactly the same topology table. And then they generate the routing table from it. So when you apply a distribute list to OSPF, it's actually just tricking the router and being like, yeah, you know about that route in the routing table, but just pretend like it's not there when you, or you know about it in the topology table, but pretend like it's not there when you create your uh, uh, routing table. So that's why we saw the, the four network disappear. And now it's back. So uh, the stake router is doing its job. We have uh, distribute list filtering applied in both directions. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.